Hello, Kyle Z here with In Session Audio. If you've been using Contact for a while, then you probably already know that most knobs, sliders, and switches on the interface of an instrument, as well as within Contact's edit mode, can be connected to a real knob, slider, button, pad, or switch on your MIDI keyboard or controller. You can do this by right-clicking the parameter you want to control, select Learn MIDI CC Number Automation, and then move a control on your MIDI device. Once you've completed these steps, you will see the on-screen control move as you move the control on your MIDI keyboard or controller. In this example, I've tied my keyboard's mod wheel, MIDI CC number one, to the attack slider of the amplifier section. Simple, right? While this is great, it's often the case that upon MIDI learning one control, you will encounter two new issues. First, you don't need or want to use the full range of the control. However, contact is forcing this behavior by default. Put another way, if you only need to modify a control within a 10% range, this means you will have to limit the use of your MIDI control to 10% of its range, which in most instances is difficult to accomplish with any accuracy. Why not give 100% of your MIDI controls range to the 10% parameter range you actually need? We will get to that in a moment. The second issue is that many times once you MIDI learn one control, you would like to simultaneously modify an additional control, commonly in an opposite direction, and also within a limited range. Let's illustrate the problem and the solution with a real-world example. Say you'd like to add a chorus effect to a sound, and you want to be able to bring the effect in and out as you play. I would begin by loading a chorus effect. I would then MIDI learn the wet slider to my mod wheel. This is where the too much range issue rears its head. Notice that the wet control can go as high as plus 24 dB. If the sound of clipping your outputs is what you're going for, then you're in business. But in this case, I want to cap the maximum range to about 30% of what it can do. Notice that to work within this limitation, I would have to make sure that I never pushed my mod wheel past about here. Certainly not optimal. Here's the solution. In Contact's browser, click Auto. Here you can select the MIDI CC number of your controller. If you're unsure what the number is, just move the controller on your MIDI keyboard and note the red lightning bolt that appears. You will also see any controls already tied to that MIDI CC listed in the Assign To column. In this area, Contact uses the word Return in place of Wet, but they are the same thing in this example. Click on Return next to MIDI CC1. This will give you the percentage control options below. I'm going to leave from at zero, but I'm going to change the two to 30%. Now you can see that when I move my mod wheel to its maximum position, the wet slider stops at negative 4.8 dB. Cool. But here's where problem two creeps in. As the wet slider moves to the right and increases, I'm getting a level boost that I really don't want. The solution is to also MIDI learn the dry control to my mod wheel and then take the same steps I just described, but when getting to the from field, I'm going to enter 33% and then change the 2 to 15%. Much better. Of course, you can season this to taste or apply this technique to any number of controls or effects. If you check out our Fluid Harmonics library, you'll see that we've made this sort of thing very simple by not only offering the ability to link these controls, which means you only need to MIDI learn one of the knobs, but we've scaled the controls so they will never go over zero dB nor have any level dips as they move in opposite directions. <laughs>